Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Idil Constantine and today we are going to be looking at chopping samples in Logic Pro for iPad. I've done a similar video before on Ableton, basically how I chop my samples. It's going to be very similar format to that, but obviously we want to see if we can do that here in Logic Pro for iPad. If you're curious about my, my current setup right now, I just got the iPad itself and this wireless MIDI controller is called Off Grid. Um, I've, I've had it for a while. I played with it for a little bit, but I feel like right now I finally found a good use for it, uh, which is with the iPad itself. I think this makes a great combo, very portable, and you don't have to deal with a lot of like dongles and cables and all that stuff. So, anyways, um, without further ado, I want to play first like the beat to kind of get an idea of what I've done here, and then we kind of will dissect it down and show you how I made it. All right, just wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of what this beat sounds like. And then if you want to check out the whole thing, just I'll play it at the end of the video. So there you go. So my current flow with the sampling and using samples, um, I actually downloaded Splice on iPad. And basically, I'll kind of go through and check out some samples, see what I like. Basically, if I like a sample, then I would just click on the three dots, um, add to library, save to files. And as I showed you in the last video when I did an overview about the iPad, if you haven't seen that, I'll link it up over here. Um, but basically, for me, the way I do it is I have files set up as a, a slide window. Um, if you're not sure how to do that, all you have to do is um, when you open files, click on the three dots on the top and then put it in slide over mode and basically puts it on the side. So now when I have logic open right here, I can just slide this in and out, um, you know, whenever I need to drag some samples. And at that point, I will just click on that. Um, I can preview the sample in here. And then if I want to use it, then I can just grab it and drop it either um, in the timeline or drop it as an instrument and then basically open it with a, a sampler. As of right now, for this tutorial and for this beat, I've been just wanted to mess around with the quick sampler. So if we go to the top, um, I have this top track right here. I'm just going to be using it for a demo. And if once you select it, if you go down over here and click on the plugin um, view, this is going to show you this minimal view of all the plugins that you have in this track. And you can see it starts with the quick sampler. Now, if you double tap the quick sampler, then it opens it in the bigger, more detailed view. Now in here, uh, if you look at the top left, you'll see there's three modes that you can use with the sample. And it's literally kind of like simpler in Ableton Live, which is probably why I love it because I love using simpler. Now starting with the first one, which is classic. And with this one, basically it plays the whole sample. You can kind of trim if you want, um, but basically it's the whole sample. And as long as you hold the, um, the, the pad down, it's gonna play the whole thing or it's gonna play until you let it go. And then the other option is one shot. Now with one shot, it's kind of the same thing, um, but you just have to hit it once. And with this, you basically, it will pitch up and down, obviously depending on the key um, and the, the pad that you're hitting. So if I go something higher, or if I can go something lower, or somewhere in the middle. And that's one shot for you. Uh, now the third one is slice, and that's my favorite. This is where all the chefs hang out. This is where you cook and you chop and you slice. Um, and when you do that, if you look on the right hand side, there is a snap um, option, which I'll explain to you what that does. But first, if we look down here, there's a transient mode. Sorry, the slicing mode. You can do transient and notes. So basically, it will just um, put those markers at the beginning of the transients. 
um, or you can do beat divisions where basically it divides it by and chops it up by beat um, and if you ever want to take some of them off you can just click on it um, and then uh, you click on the trash can right here and then the other mode would be equal division um, this one, I like this one. I usually start with this because I can kind of move it wherever I want and it's not so busy. I can't do too many slices like right in front of me. It gets very confusing and hard to deal with. Uh, so this is nice and even and then I can just kind of move things around uh, how I want. And then the last one we have manual, which is basically you kind of put a point wherever you want. But as you as I move it, you see that it's kind of like it's snapping at certain points. And that's what this snap mode does right here. So currently it's set to transient and note, which is great because it basically kind of detects, knows where the transients are, and then it will just snap to them um, right away, which is very cool. You can do zero crossing, which at that point you can kind of like really go wherever you want. It's kind of a manual mode. Um, and then you can do it by beat, where like it just snaps to the beat or you can have it completely off too that's totally fine but for me so far what i like is setting the mode on transient and note and setting the snap on transient and note it makes it super handy and easy Now let's move down to some of those um, additional um, uh, details that you can kind of fine tune with this. Um, with this one right here, I haven't really played much with the LFOs, but mostly when I'm chop chopping samples, I care more about the pitch and the filter. Uh, those two things kind of like makes are, are very convenient. Like when you, whenever you're trying to chop a sample, you want to get it into the right pitch. Um, and obviously, if you want to do some kind of a, uh, a cutoff filter or anything like that. So as I said, with the pitch right here, so if I hit this, I can pitch it down or I can pitch it up. And then after I get it to a certain point, I can fine tune that pitch using the fine knob that way. And with all the knobs, if you double tap them, it will just reset it to back how it was. And then the filter I have, basically the filter you can turn them off and turn them on. You can control the filter that way. If you wanna add some drive, And then the last one is amp if you want to do any kind of like panning right to left or if you want to kind of uh, control the volume of the of the sample too. Double tap, bring it back to where it was. And that's really it for the quick sampler. It's very intuitive, it's very uh, to the point and simple. And that's what I like about it. Here you can see kind of like the pattern that I came up with um, based on the sample right here. Um, if I click on the classic, you can kind of hear it. It's a very beautiful sample, but I'm not really using any of it. I'm using very, very small bits of it um, in the slice window. And then for the drums, I'm just using um, a loop. Here very solid solid drum loop and then after that i have the bass down here so what i want to show you over here in the bass it's funny because i didn't mean to keep the glide on but you do have the option for glide and it's helpful with the 808s a lot of people love gliding 808s and that's where you can use that glide knob right here under the pitch section i'm gonna go ahead and turn it off because i don't think it fits this beat but basically, that's the glide option if you want to use that with, with your 808s. And then I have a, just a transition um, over here. And then after that, like I said, number 9 and 10 are, uh, this is a percussion loop. And this is uh, another sample 
a loop sample that I kind of, the only thing that I did to it was just adding some filters and the channel EQ. Um, and that's pretty much it. This one right here is another sample that I chopped up. Basically what I did is I took the that intro and start chopping it up over here. And then later on, I also have a vocal that I chopped up down here. Let's go ahead and solo this. And you can see over here the pattern that I came up with the vocal chop right here. And that's pretty much it. It's really easy. It's, uh, it's actually a lot easier than I expected. Um, I usually use Koala Sampler. Um, it's been great so far, but it's nice to have this, to be able to do this in the DAW that I'm gonna be using on the iPad. So I can chop samples, add to it, um, you know, MIDI, vocals, all that stuff right in one app instead of having to jump around. This is pretty much it. I just wanted to kind of go over the quick sampler in Logic Pro for iPad. If you have any questions, please drop them down in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to uh, go over them. And uh, if you're interested about this, I'll also drop a link in the description below um, and I might do a um, an overview of it in a future video. So make sure to stay tuned, subscribe, hit that notification bell to stay notified of new videos and uh, I will see you on the next one. Peace out. Keep making music.